92 from all 51 here. All right, we're going to do fluid change on the 1967 Farm All 140. I'm going to film Rhett doing a lot of this. I'm going to be helping him. But I'm primarily doing this to show more or less Rhett doing it, me helping him, and uh, this particular tractor as we get it get it back into shape and get it going. So, so what we're going to do is Rhett's going to get under here. He's going to take the inch and one eighth wrench, which is what the oil pan is, <coughs> oil pan bolt is, unless it's been replaced or rounded off because somebody used the wrong wrench or whatever on it. Um, do not use, when you're changing oil on a tractor, especially a farm oil, you can do what you want to do with anything else. I see this very often. Do not use a crescent wrench to take that nut on the oil pan off. It will round it off. Time and time again, I've got tractors where they were rounded off and had to end up taking a vice grip to get the thing off. So, like I always say, do like you're supposed to the first time with the proper wrenches or whatever and proper tools. And that way you don't round things off and create problems for people down the road 20 years or whatever. So, all right, but Rhett's going to go ahead and he's going to crack the drain plug out. I went ahead and broke it. There you go. Now, stick your hand out to the side and turn that thing, because when it comes, when it lets go, you don't want oil splashing all over you. So just let it go, and we can get it out later. Oh, yeah. Oh, you got it. You saved it. All right, sit it down on the floor. Oh, it's nice and black. A lot of times, uh, let's see, I can't remember which one it is now. Yeah. A lot of times if there's water getting in here, like if you got leaking liners, uh, cracked liners, or whatever, um, a lot of condensation, them sitting around for long periods of time, this cast will sweat. If it, um, and just like old red tractors, when he redid his M, he did, um, lined everything with that red, uh, that paint, I can't think of the name of it. So that was a very good idea, and that, that helps it not sweat as bad. Because when you drain that plug, a lot of times you'll get a spoonful of water or so, or I've seen a lot of water come out. So we're going we're gonna to go ahead and let this drain a good while. Um, I may come back to mess with it tomorrow. But what we'll do next is we'll replace the filter up here. And uh, I may do that, help him do that, and replace the O-ring in there. Cause it, the O-ring in here, you'll have to dig it out if it's been in there a while because it's turned to concrete, I'm sure. All right, got our, while well, the oil's draining down below, which is, looks good. So happy with that. We got our 7 8 wrench here and we're gonna go ahead and take, I went ahead and broke it loose for him, but he's gonna go ahead and take the bolt out, out the top. Don't lose that crush, that washer right there. I don't, I don't have another one right now. Which usually you can use those again. They don't usually don't leak. If it leaks though, you'll have to replace it. But you should replace that little washer up there with a new one. Got five miles of thread on it. All right, now I have a little. Which over the top? There you go. All right, we're gonna lay it right there. All right, yeah, you can see it's, it seems like it's got a lot more on it, but it. But, uh, it's just a long bolt. All right, a lot of times like, you can take a rubber mallet or you can take your hand and just smack the side of that, that canister here to break that seal. Yeah, it won't go. String beam here. Oh, see? Break that seal. All right, here, take the, take the top there. All right, lay that on the floor plate. All right, let's see, it looks like it has a... Oh, it's leaking everywhere. All right, come on, this way, follow the... Here, hold it, hold the top of it. All right. I'm not sure what it, that filter is. All right, you can put it down there on the... I was expecting to find a uh, Case IH, or not Case IH, but uh an actual international harvester filter in it. It wouldn't surprise me. Um, yeah, you can see there it's 
all kind of nasty. We'll have to get that dirt out of there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean that out. And um, we'll go ahead and clean all that out and uh, dig the little O-ring that's in here out. Sometimes it turns to concrete, but um, usually it's a little pick or something. You can get that out and then make sure you don't get any debris in there when you lay the O-ring back in there and then we'll come right back. All right, got a little light on here so we can see a little better and I got it cleaned off for the most part. This little O-ring, it seems like there's nothing in there. You just got to dig. I don't have my pick. I can't find my pick like I, oh, see there. And this one here is just about turned to concrete. Oh yeah, I'll come out in one piece. That's good. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some brake cleaner. Make sure I didn't get any in the hole here. Um, take some brake cleaner and kind of flush that out so there's nothing in there that's going to sit. And um, cause that O-ring to not fit or seat properly. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of, I think we got to, I think I may have a leak in... Uh, upper radiator hose here because it seems to be it looks like antifreeze there so and uh today we're uh we're doing napa napa style on everything i know y'all be like oh you're not using 30 weight low ash oil actually i am using the 30 weight low ash oil but i'm not using the i'm not using a case ih filter um closest dealer to me either uh acock tractor in goldsboro which i highly recommend or um bns equipment but it's getting the only thing about bns is you got to make sure you got the right person up there that that knows about the older stuff and they're a great dealer and uh closest ihd case ih dealer to me but the uh, reason I like dealing with uh, Brad at ACOC Tractor is he's very knowledgeable about the older stuff and there's not many of those people that care anymore or uh, know about these tractors that work at these dealerships, which Brad, they, they're a New Holland dealership, but they still carry some, they can still get parts. So it's very appreciative of him so, all right, that's all cleaned out. Um, you can see this O-ring. You can see here, <laughs> this O-ring right here is square. You have to make sure that when you get it pressed in there that it does not twist on you because then that will be a whole other set of problems. And they're usually, this one actually fit pretty well. Um, they usually seem oversized and uh, I'm not pressing too hard with the end of the screwdriver. I'm just making sure it's seated in there good. So, all right, you can see it's seated in there. Well, and uh, I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the oil again. And this, next time I'm gonna put a case IH paper cartridge type filter on it. And this, um, this is actually an old tractor supply one right now I'm going to put in here, but it's the uh, tractor supply number is um, 107-1099. Anyway, it's a Baldwin filter. Baldwin makes the filters for K. I think Baldwin makes the filters for Case IH. So, and when putting these filters down, this is the top. The short side is the top. The long side goes down in the little hole or the big hole here. Fits down in here like that. And it, some will fit a little snug and some won't. But, all right, that's set in there. Sprayed the inside of the filter out with brake cleaner. Didn't see any trash in there. I guess make sure there's no 
chunks of anything left. Make sure it's clean around the bottom of the, the base of the canister here, or cover, whatever you call it. Everything's good on that. Make sure there ain't no sharp edges on the bottom. Feel around there, because you never know. People take these things off, they drop them, they dent, they could dent right here. Um, somebody could, you never know. Like I say, when you got a tractor that's 50, 60, 70, 80 years old, and it's had 15 owners, every laborer and, and, and whoever touched it, you never know what has happened to these things. So always uh, inspect it. And see, this, this is an original paint tractor. It has not been repainted. And you can see on this filter here that it is red on the front. In the back, it's got that yellow primer. This tractor does have the yellow primer. You can see right there and on the valve cover here it's the yellow primer a lot of people think oh that's a gold demonstrator no no that's the primer they were using at the time so but a lot of times when these filters were sitting on here you can tell which side didn't get painted like on that tractor there right behind even the spin on oil filter on that tractor it's yellow right behind it so you can see they they weren't going for no beauty queens they were going for uh, production and they needed to get them out so the farmers could get them and do what they needed to do so all right, go ahead and get this lid on. Go ahead and turn the pretty side out. And I'm gonna go ahead and, I've already cleaned the bolt off, or Rhett's cleaned the bolt off for me. Um, make sure there's no, I've seen people put tape in the threads here. When I pulled one out, that had tape. Uh, I don't know why they would put tape in there. Make sure that hole's clean. Make sure this hole here is clean. Oil passes through there. Make sure you got all that clean out. Make sure you inspect your little copper washer up there. It looks good, so we're gonna reuse it because we don't have one. Make sure you get that thing in there. Slowly. It's pretty snug. Got it snug down there. Make sure you look along the base here. Make sure it's not cocked to one side. Kind of always kind of and and put you a little put you a little oil on that i i put a little oil in there in the base of it when before i put the ring in and you saw that that pushed that out but oil that ring a little bit but i like to get in there and kind of just make sure it's seated good and i'll take my seven eighths you'll take your seven eighths wrench pay no mind to that it's kind of a i'm not 100 percent sure what the i don't know if there's a torque setting on these um if there is i'll look and i'll put it at the bottom of the screen here but just use your best judgment and i've got that one tightened down pretty good it's not moving not rocking i didn't put all my weight into it but i pulled good and tight so about what it was when we broke when i broke it loose don't want to over tighten it and smash the thing out so that's complete there the canister cartridge oil filter is replaced i'm gonna go ahead and drain this plug down here on the bottom take your wrench and break this loose all right i'm gonna go ahead and slide We'll pan over right quick and should not get much at all to come out of here. Yeah, not much at all come out. So, really don't quite understand. I guess it's to drain anything that sludge or whatever. Um, it's to drain the filter base, but I'm, I'm guessing that's drain whatever's in there before you take this off which i've never had any run out so i don't quite understand that but i've never never had any run out but i'll tighten that back up filter and all is good and tight uh, base plug here to drain the whole filter housings back on oil pan is all but quit draining only a little drip here and there where's the oil plug at oil plug is cleaned up little copper washers on there make sure that's on there this one had some thread tape on it i'm not sure why but i don't think you're supposed to put thread tape on them that's what the copper washer is pretty much for if you tighten them up but you can see how these little places here that's where somebody has put a crescent wrench or something or a pair of vice grips so you can see there right there where the little teeth are somebody has put a set of vice grips on it sometime do not do that please I'm gonna put, the oil back in. <clears throat> put you a good amount of 
source what you think you need to put on there, whatever it took to get it off, put that back on it. Wipe that off. So always make sure you wipe that plug off. Make sure you wipe everything off up here. That way you can tell when you change the oil, you crank it up and you got oil starting to run out and you can tell, oh, it's leaking over here, not the, what was there before. That's a big thing there. I don't know where all this here. Oh, this is something that run off the side. So yeah, I'll need to clean all this off. So that way when I crank the thing up, if something wasn't seated right, if this was leaking up here, it's gonna run down the side. You can notice stuff like that when it's dry and clean versus greasy as all get out and then you sitting there wondering i said is that from before or is that something that's running out because something i did wrong so all right oil plugs in everything with the filters in we're going to pull the dipstick out wipe it off as you can see there this side when the engine is stopped that's your low and your full mark you want it as close to the full not over as you can get always check it before you crank the thing up so i'm gonna what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna put this back in just a little bit there and then we'll go ahead and pour the oil in here's your oil fill cap for your engine take it off make sure that that little uh, flat uh, rubber type o-ring or some sort is in there because that's what seals it if you don't have that on there it's going to blow by or it's going to kick oil out the side so you can see the governor inside there all right make sure you clean the bottom of your funnel off so you ain't got any trash getting in there stick it in there like that i'm going to add some lucas oil stabilizer to it it's supposed to help with uh, eliminate dry starts uh engine wear um it's a good additive i like to use in vehicles and i put sometimes i put it on in the tractors as well my engines and stuff like that so i like to use it it does a good job it's a goal it's a good oil additive to use um there's a lot of products out there there's one that's in a silver can and i can't think it's called restore i think and you know it'll help with stuck rings and things like that it's just a good additive to this this can here i've used i've used it on the lawnmowers um so this is not a full can um usually for culture oil you know you use a little bit more but and it's a it's a little thick you can see a lot of videos project farm if you've ever watched project farm he he does a lot of reviews on different oil additives and oils and things like that so um it's just something I've used personal preference. You may use something else, that's fine. That's what I've always used, try to use Lucas products. No paid promotion or anything, just something I've always used. Um, Dad used it and, and um, they've got some good fuel stabilizer or fuel additive that you can put in your diesel or your gas engines, which a lot of times I'll add a can to, to these here. Today, I'm gonna run some oil through it and I'm gonna do a new oil, oil change later, but this is a 30 weight. Rotella 30 weight oil. The oil we changed today, I'm gonna change it again here eventually because I'm gonna run run some of this through it and clean everything out and then I'm gonna change it and put a Case IH filter and uh, you can put any filter in there, it don't matter. Uh, Baldwin makes them uh, for Case IH, I think it is. I think Baldwin makes it, um, I'm not sure. I think they make it for Case IH and whoever, but yeah, you know, filter is pretty much a filter, uh, especially when you get down to these cartridge filters, so. But, I, I like Rotella stuff. Um, I use it in most all everything I got. So dump truck, pickups, lawnmowers and all. So And before you dump the first cord in, always make sure you got the oil plug in. Done that before. It's still pushing out that oil stabilizer. All right, we're putting the last of the third quart in. I'm gonna check it and make sure. Dump it all the way up.
I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure that um, we're not getting too over full with that additive in there. So, all right, we'll go ahead and check the oil now. All right, see, I push the stick all the way back in. Leave it there for a second or two, and we'll um, let the the oil should be it run down as far as it's going to go. All right, go ahead and pull the dipstick it back out. All right, and show the camera up here. All right, you can see right there, it's just at the O on the low side. So we're going to continue to add oil. Go ahead and wipe that off and stick it back in there halfway like we had it before. That way you don't have to wipe it again. Okay, all right, and get the other oil can there. All right, we're going to go ahead and we're going to add a bite, a little over half of it in there. That should bring us back up to where, bring us up close. I want to overfill it. Nothing wrong with having just a hair over the time it fills in all the crevices in there. And that about half? Look at it on the side there. We're gonna recheck the oil again. Give this a second to run down there in the finish running down. I mean it's not very far that it has to go from the oil field here to the to the bottom. Just hold on, leave it in there a second. Pull it out and we'll check her again. Alright. See there where you're let's see. We're just a little bit over the, you can see I got it right at the edge of the funnel lip right there. So it's just almost halfway between low and full. So wipe the stick off again and go ahead and add the rest of that cord in there. And it should put us pretty close to where we need to be. Rhett doing his own oil change on his own tractor. There you go. I'll let it run over. Tip it the other way. Yeah. Just hold it there a few seconds. Every little bit you leave in the can, that's money wasted, so give it a second to run back in there. Run and finish running all the way down to the bottom. You may have to go steal some from the other. All right, go ahead and check it again. Oh yeah, see so we're we're a little over half, so we're gonna have to we'll have to add a little bit more. To it so all right wipe that one off all right we got another core here 30 weight oil we'll go ahead and add that one in there to it all right and that should bring it back up to the full mark and put the cap on there and we'll recheck it again. So you put the dipstick back in there. We have to wipe it again. <laughs> Alright, you got your rag? Alright, go wipe it off. Alright, stick it back in there. That way we get an accurate reading. Alright, leave it in there a second. Let's see where we're at. Oh yeah, we're right there at the full mark, just a hair over that full mark, which the full mark is right there at the end of my finger. I can't get it to focus because it's trying to focus on the floor, but you can see there. So it's where it needs to be. So we've filled, successfully filled it full of oil. All right, I've inspected the cap. Cap's in good shape. The little prongs are holding the washer in there, the, the rubber washer. Rhett is going to put the cap back on. Tighten it down. All right, good and tight. All right, so we've completed the engine oil change on our 1967 Farmall 140, and Rhett did a good job. Um, that's his first oil change, and he did probably 90% of the work. I broke the bolts loose and 
and I uh, poured some of the oil in there for them. And uh, but so good job, Rhett. And uh, like I say, this I'm gonna go ahead and make this a separate video because this runs so long already. And then, well, like I say, we'll do a next. Uh, we'll do transmission oil change. We'll go ahead and change that drain. I'll show you where the proper plugs to drain it and the little check plug which is a pain in the butt to get to, is right here on the side of the transmission. Uh, regular gear oil in there. Um, these tractors are a little different from those 79s. The 79s had different seals in there, so you could, they come with high-tran in them. These did not. These had regular, I think, gear oil in them. I don't know, probably very straight 90-weight gear oil or something like that. So, Thanks for watching, and um, all right, good job, Rhett. And uh, we'll... Uh, so the next thing we'll do is the uh, transmission will change. We'll try to try to make a whole series out of this. So, all right, thanks for watching.